factors to solve equations. But now check it out. What your book does is it leads you through very specific types of questions and it says, hey, there's a different method you can use when you have this specific type of question. That's the equation of computers. So that's what you're getting. Um, ooh, this brain. This fuse. Yes. Seeing as you uh, are here alive with us, no longer at gunpoint, I figure you've got a spirit of gratitude, my young brother. Will you pray for us? Uh, sure. Thank you. All right. Thank you, God, for this day. And, uh, for another beautiful day on this earth. And um, he's supposed to just have a great math class. And please bless Mr. Muneer as he teaches us the lesson today. And um, please help us to stay safe in all that we do, whether it's after school or um, just anywhere else. Please just guide us and protect us in Jesus' name. Amen. OK. So um, we're starting our lesson here. What your book will ask of you is to do this special new thing for special situations. And what I'm saying is that rather than that, you just have these two methods. When the leading coefficient is one, you just do the, the simple factoring. When the leading coefficient is not one, you do factoring by grouping. So I'm not going to teach you this new thing because it's just kind of like another thing to remember and learn and understand and go through. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like rather than teaching you a new special thing, I just say, hey, use the way that works and just use it in all situations when the leading coefficient is not one. Does that make sense to you? So if you're going through your book and you're like not understanding it, don't worry. It's because I'm not teaching you some of the things that are in the book. Okay? If you're interested in knowing them, I'm glad to tell you on um, some kind of sidebar kind of type of thing. So with that being said, what am I going to teach you from this lesson? Well, what I'm going to teach you from this lesson starts here with difference of squares. Okay, so let's remember what difference of squares are. <coughs> difference of squares. So if you guys remember, if I have a plus b times a minus b, I use the distributive property, aka I FOIL, I get a squared minus a b plus a b minus b squared. But what happens to those middle terms? Cancel. And I end up with a squared minus b squared. Does that make sense? Why is this called the difference of squares? I have two perfect squares, a squared and b squared, and I'm taking the difference. Thus, it's called difference of squares. But conversely, if instead I'm given a squared minus b squared, and I'm told to factor this, well, I know that this is just a plus b times a minus b. So in other words, all I have to do is figure out what a is and figure out what b is, and then my factoring process is easy. It's just a plus b times a minus b. So the question then is, what is an example of this? Well, what if I have x squared minus 4? Well, in this case, what is a? What is a? x. a squared is x squared. OK, that's cool. And what is b? 2. Good, because 2 squared is 4. You see? I don't have to worry about the minus, because inherently, the difference of squares will have a negative. So it's never going to be like a negative. You don't have to worry about that, OK? It's just. Whatever this is squared. Okay? Does that make sense? Not half of it, the square root of it. And we'll get into that. Okay? But very good question. So what does this mean? Well, x squared minus 4 is just x plus 2 times x minus 2. And you see, I don't have to go through a process of factoring, it's just done. Okay? And this is a very specific situation when I have a perfect square minus a perfect square. So what's another example of that? What if I have x squared minus 9? Well, again, what is a in this case? Class? x. Good. And what is b? 3. 
You see? So this equals a plus b times a minus b, or x plus 3 times x minus 3. Does that make sense to you guys? You understand this? OK. Any questions so far? All right, so go ahead on your own. Do x squared minus 25. Factor that expression. Okay, what's A, class? X, what's B? Five. Five, good. So this just becomes A plus B times A minus B, or X plus five times X minus five. Does that make sense? You see how this is easier than trying to do some process? If I notice it's a difference of squares, then I just do this, okay? It makes life a whole lot easier, okay? All right, well, what about this now? About 4x squared minus 16. First off, if it was plus 16, could I do this? If it was plus 16, could I use the same process? No. Why? It has to be minus. In order for it to be a difference of squares, it has to be a difference of squares, not the sum of squares. Okay, so in this case, what's B should be pretty straightforward at this point. What's B? B is, B is 4, 4, so what is A? 2x, very good. And why is A 2x? Because if I do 2x squared, the square applies to the 2, so that's 4, and to the x, so that's 4x squared. So what does this become? 2x plus 4 times 2x minus 4. Does that make sense? You guys get this? Any questions so far? Oh, nice pillow. Oh, no, no, no. What I'm showing you is why A is 2x. Because remember, it's A squared minus B squared. So if it's 2x, well, 2x squared is, square the 2 is 4, square the x is x squared. Does that make sense? It makes sense when I think about it backwards, but. Yeah, but it makes Good question. What I have to do is figure out what A is and what B is in order for this expression to be a squared minus b squared. So in order for this to be a perfect square, a has to be 2x. Does that make sense? In order for this to be a perfect square, b has to be 4. Does that make sense now? OK, good. All right. Any other questions? OK. Now, what about this? What about 9x to the fourth minus x squared?
Okay. Shh. What about this one? B should be pretty straightforward at this point. What's B? X. X. But what about A? We know it's going to be 3 something, right? 3 X squared. Very good. Why? Why? Well, because if I do 3 X squared, squared, well, the square goes to the 3 is 9. Square goes to the X squared. Well, when I'm when I'm raising an exponent to an exponent, I multiply them, so that becomes 9x to the 4th, which is exactly what I was looking for. So what this becomes is, when I'm factoring this, is 3x squared plus x times 3x squared minus x. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay, so we have basically now run through the gamut of the possibilities. Okay, there could be different variables, there could be different numbers, obviously. But those are all the kind of range of possibilities. But with that being said, there's a different way to do this one. And I suggest that you do not this way, though I have shown you how to do it this way. But I suggest that you do it the way that I'm about to show you. Okay? So if I run into a situation like this, the first thing that I should ask myself, if I'm factoring, if I've got multiple terms, the first thing I should ask myself is, is there a common factor? And if there is, in fact, a common factor, I should pull it out. I should pull out the GCF, the greatest common factor. So with that being said, is there a greatest common factor for this? What would it be? What would the greatest common factor be? Yes. It would be x squared. Because look, if I pull out an x squared, this becomes 9x squared minus 1. Does that make sense? You guys see that? I pull out an x squared, and this becomes 9x squared minus 1. Now, now that I've done that, now I can go ahead and do the difference of squares. And in this case, what's a? What's a? 3x, three, three x, just x because, right? And what's b? 1. Good. So this becomes x squared times 3x plus 1 times 3x minus 1. Does that make sense? You understand what I did? What did I do? I pulled out the greatest common factor, and then I did the difference of squares. And the question you may have is why? Why would I do that? It seems like an extra step. Well, yes? No, no, no. They're the same question. I'm just doing it a different way. And I'm showing you why this way is better. Sorry. Shh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah. I started out with the same thing. I started out with the same thing here. And I'm just doing a different method. Does that make more sense now? Yeah, so are you both doing it like multiple What I'm saying is you could do it this way and just immediately do difference of squares, but you should do it this way and immediately pull out the greatest common factor. Whenever I'm factoring, I should immediately pull out the greatest common factor if there is one. Okay? That's a rule. Okay? It's it's not necessarily the only way, but at least from my perspective, it is the best way. So you pull out the greatest common factor, and the question is, why is this better? Well, look at our results. My factor here, my two factors are 3x squared plus x and 3x squared minus x, okay? Versus my factors here, which are x squared times 3x plus 1 times 3x minus 1, you see? If I were to set this equal to 0, I'm now solving for zero. These factors are more challenging. Do you understand that? Whereas if I'm setting this equal to zero, well, I know how to handle these now. You see? Those are like what I've done before. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay. So I always want to pull out the greatest common factor because it ends up making the factors more simple. Any questions? Yes, sir. Like this? Mm-hmm. 
Um, in fact, I'm going to let you guys do it, and then I'll work it out. So go ahead and number 335, number 6 and 7. 335, number 6 and 7. came in a little bit later. This is all on YouTube. You guys have a quiz, not tomorrow, but on Friday on lessons 8.1, 8.2, and 8.3. Basically, factoring the simple way, factoring by grouping, and then this lesson, which is different than the one still around. Right. Question just came up. Where's the YouTube video link? This isn't it. This is it. Okay. Just go on your bulletin board and click on the title, and it'll take you to YouTube. And then look. There's a playlist. There's a playlist, and I already have lesson eight point one up. Um, Okay, you can also just search my name on YouTube and they'll all come up. Yeah, that's all I found. Yeah. I'll give you a little bit more time. Remember, you're doing number six and number seven. Do this back here. So she, all the kids made this. The color, the blue is very What? Mr. Mitchell had one too, right? And Mr. Crank apparently. Mr. Crank has like a long time. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's let's do it together. Okay. So number six is relatively straightforward. Um, what's a? X and B is 12. So this just becomes X plus 12 times X minus 12. Here, what's the first step here? What's the first step? Pull out the common factor, which is 9Y squared. This then becomes 9Y squared minus 1. See? It. Now that I've done that, now I do difference of squares. What's A? 3y, Three y and B is 1. So it becomes 9y squared times 3y plus 1 times 3y minus 1. You missed it. It's okay. It's A squared minus B squared equals A plus B times Factor first. So even if it equals the same, it's still um, 
that's technically correct, but what I'm saying is you should do it this way. Okay? Um, so, so, do you guys get this? Any questions on this? Now, those glasses are great, Ben. Um, what if I set them equal to zero and told you to solve? Well, you'd get to this final step, and then you'd have to do one more thing. This one should be relatively easy for you guys at this point. What property is that? The zero product property, right? So I set them both equal to zero. And then I solve for x. Here, x equals negative 12. I add 12 to both sides. And I get x equals positive 12. So those two are my, <clears throat> my answers here. But now look at this. <clears throat> this one, I have three terms in my product. Do I treat it any different, or do I just set them all equal to 0, we think? Set them all equal to 0. Okay. No matter how many terms there are, zero product property works the exact same way. What do you mean? Set. No, no, no. This, this is what I'm saying is two different questions. So originally I just said factor, and now I'm saying what if, instead of just factoring, I said these were equal to zero and solve for x and y. Okay? So what I would do is I'd set them all individually equal to zero. And then solve. Class, this first one here, 9y squared equals 0. What does y have to be? 0. zero. Can't be anything else. y would have to be 0. This one I have to solve by subtracting 1 from both sides. I get 3y equals negative 1 divide by 3. And I get y equals negative one third. Here, same deal, but I add one to both sides. I get three y equals one. And then divide by three to get y equals one third. So I have three solutions in this case. And there they are. Any questions on that? Do you guys follow in this? Do you understand? OK, so that's it for kind of newer stuff. Um, there's one more thing that I'd like to show you guys. And then you'll be free to do your homework. OK. What about something like this? What about something like this? I ask you to factor this. I ask you to factor this. There's something different about this, right? It's not just like 4x squared minus 24x. It's 4x to the third power. Well, what did I say the first step is no matter what, whenever I'm factoring? I pull out the greatest common factor. Well, is there a common factor here? Four, four but not just four, four, x. four x. They all share a four x. Um, oh, sorry. It is on the middle of page 333. Okay, but like I said, your book does this in a different way. So if you're looking at the way they're solving it, it's just probably, it might be confusing. So just, just follow along with the way I'm showing you. So I pull out the 4x. This becomes x squared minus 6x plus 9. Right? Does that make sense? Okay. And then 
what's the leading coefficient here? The 4x I can think I can kind of ignore for now. What's the leading coefficient? One. So I just factor the simple way, right? Which just means I factor the nine, which the factors of nine are one and nine and three and three. Um, this is negative, this is positive, so they both have to be negative. Which factor pair matches what can make negative 6? 3 and 3, right? So I get 4x times x minus 3 times x minus 3, right? Does that make sense? Um, is there another way I could write that? 4x times x minus 3 squared. 4x times x minus 3 squared. Cool? Does that make sense, guys? OK. All right, good. So what was the difference here? The only difference was I had a greatest common factor that I had to pull out in order to factor. Sorry, yep. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. I'll get there in a second. Um, but before we do that, um, before we do that, Take a look at this one. Oh, no, no, not that one. Not that one, not that one. Which one did I want to do? Sorry, hold on one second. Go ahead and do number three. number three on sorry on the top of page 334 Okay, first step is what? Pull out the greatest common factor, mm -hmm. which is 2y. Becomes y squared plus 6y plus 9. Leading coefficient is 1. So I factor the simple way. It's almost the exact same problem, honestly. 1 and 9, 3 and 3. They're both positive, so um, they're both going to be positive, the factors. It becomes 2y times y plus 3 times y plus 3. Or another way to write that is 2y times y plus 3 squared. Now, this isn't necessarily the problem. So that's the answer. That's it. Okay? You're done? But what if I said this was equal to 0? Okay? I'd set this equal to 0. And I'd have to set them both equal to zero. But look, do I have to do what? God bless you. Do I have to do y plus three twice? Y plus three equals zero and y plus three equals zero? No, because it's the same solution. This one here is just y equals zero. 
this one here, subtract 3, is y equals negative 3. Okay? So that's good. Remember, if the leading coefficient isn't 1, you have to do the factoring by grouping. Okay? And that was less than 8.2. With that said, um, what is your homework? Your homework for 8.3, which obviously it's vital to do because your quiz will be on this as well. Um, lesson 8.3 is numbers 3 through 18. Okay, so with that said, Mr. Worsham asked about... Um, yes? Um, sure, why don't you just wait for this last one, okay? Mr. Worsham asked about number eight on the homework. On the homework. Yeah. Page 340. So this one, it looks more challenging, but it's actually quite simple. Again, when I have two terms like this, for now at least I can assume it's difference of squares. So my question is what's A and what's B? So what's A? Not 4, 2, P. Good. And what's B? 3, Q squared. Okay. So what does this become? Well, it's just 2P plus 3Q squared and 2P minus 3Q squared. You might say, oh, well, can't I pull out like a, it's got a square term in there. I see why it could be a little bit tricky, but... Look, there's nothing, there's nothing else shared, so I can't distribute out a common factor. Does that make sense? All right. Any questions on that? Yes. What if you have um, I'm going to do that one actually right there. Okay. Go right ahead, Mr. Simrock. Okay. Um, sorry, sorry. That's number eight, by the way, in your homework. Okay. The next one I want to do is number six. So I was looking for one like this. Number six is, did you get it all, Charlie? Yes. All right. No, you're okay. Um, shh, shh. Focus on this, guys, because I didn't do an example like this yet today. All right? What's the first step when I'm factoring? I look for a... Common factor. And if there is one, I pull it out. What's the common factor here? Greatest common factor? 2x. So I pull out a 2x, and I get 16x squared minus 8x plus 1. Now that's cool. I did it. But what's the leading coefficient? Is the leading coefficient 1? So what do I have to do? Factoring by... Grouping. Okay, now, whenever I do factoring by grouping, remember I can drop that, I can drop that uh, factor out first but to bring it back in the end to make it look a little bit more easy. So I can do that for now as long as I remember to bring it back in the end. And then what's the step that I do? Yes. Multiply the first and the last. I get 16, and then I factor that. Factors of 16 are 1 and 16, 2 and 8, 4 and 4. This is positive, this is negative, which means they both have to be negative, which are combined to make negative 8, 4 and 4. Sorry. I split the middle term, right? That's factoring by grouping. I split the middle term. I'm 16x squared minus 4x minus 4x plus 1. That's the whole idea. With the factoring by grouping, I don't immediately put, oh, x plus 4 times x plus 4. I use those factors to split the middle term. And then I group the first two and the last two terms. 
And what do I pull out? The greatest common factor. What's the greatest common factor of the first two terms? 4x. So it's 4x times 4x minus 1. What's the greatest common factor here? 1, but this is a negative, so what do I have to pull out? Negative 1. Negative 1 times 4x minus 1. Whenever there's a negative here, I always have to pull out a negative. Otherwise, the terms, the two groups won't match. I check it. Yep, they match. I'm good. So I group the 4x minus 1. And then the second group is 4x minus 1 as well. And what do I have to remember that I dropped out? The 2x. Okay, and last thing, is there another way to write this? Times... Good. All right. There you go. So that was just another one factoring by grouping. That's number six on your homework. Okay. So again, what is your homework? Your homework is page 340, numbers 3 through 18. Do you have any extra help tomorrow? Yeah, I'll be here. Yeah, guys, I'm always here after school, at least a little bit, unless I got something going on, which, like, there's usually no reason for me to leave immediately. So I'm generally here, um, so you can always come by and see me, either in my office or Mrs. Muller's room, which is the one right next door. Any questions? Homework? Just, uh, any questions? All right, good job, class. Go ahead and get started on your homework.